A cheap car is allowed to be simple. A cheap car is allowed to be slow. But a cheap car is never allowed to be cheap where it matters most, and that is your safety. Self-driving does not fail because artificial intelligence is not smart enough. It fails because sunlight behaves like sunlight. Because reflections scatter. Because physics does not negotiate. And batteries do not listen to marketing promises. Batteries listen to chemistry. They listen to temperature. They listen to supply chains and energy density and thermal limits. Today, I am going to answer five questions that Tesla would rather you not ask out loud. Not because the answers are bad, but because the answers are complicated, uncomfortable, and rooted in engineering rather than optimism. Can a budget-friendly electric vehicle survive a real crash without becoming a financial nightmare? Will cybercab-inspired doors help you or trap you when another car parks too close? How does Tesla maintain crash safety while building millions of vehicles faster than ever before? Does the battery expansion in Berlin actually change the price you will pay, or is it mostly symbolic? And where is full self-driving really today, not on social media, but in the real world? I am going to speak like an engineer, but I promise you will understand every word. Let us first clear the fog around what people call Model 2. Tesla has never officially confirmed that name. What the market is actually discussing is an entry-level Tesla vehicle targeted around $25,000 before incentives. Alongside that vehicle sits something very different. The Cyber Cab. The Cyber Cab is not simply a small car. It is a production philosophy. It is Tesla pulling autonomy, manufacturing speed, cost reduction, and artificial intelligence into a single experiment. That is why you are seeing confusion. Two-door concepts. Four-door concepts. Hatchbacks. Minimalist shuttles. Spy photos from Texas. Test vehicles in California. Artist renderings. And a growing number of images generated entirely by artificial intelligence. Some of what you are seeing is real. Some of it is educated guessing and some of it is pure fiction designed to attract clicks. Tesla encourages this uncertainty. They learned a hard lesson when competitors copied visible design cues from earlier vehicles before launch. Secrecy is now a strategic weapon, but secrecy creates a problem for you because you are not buying a concept. You are considering spending carefully saved money. So instead of arguing about which rendering is accurate, let us focus on the only three things that actually determine whether this vehicle succeeds. The battery, the manufacturing system, and the autonomy that ships, not the autonomy promised. Before we go any further, I want to ask three questions that matter more than any keynote. The first question matters deeply if you are over 55. Can you get in and out of the car without pain? I am not talking about a young athlete. I am talking about you. If your knees complain when you stand. If your back stiffens after a short drive. If you use a cane for balance. Seat height. Door opening geometry. The way your body rotates as you sit. These are not comfort details. They are usability thresholds. If you have to drop down into a low seat and pull yourself back out, the car fails before you ever turn the key. The second question hits your wallet directly. If someone bumps you in a parking lot, does that turn into a total loss? Insurance companies do not care about appearance. They care about labor hours, structural alignment, part availability, and safety liability. A car priced around $25,000 can cross the total loss threshold with frightening ease if repairs are complex. Special hinges. Sensors inside doors. Structural panels bonded 
rather than bolted. These decisions determine whether a minor accident becomes a financial disaster. The third question is about raw physics. Is a small electric car actually safe when surrounded by massive trucks and sport utility vehicles? Crash safety depends on controlled energy absorption, load paths that root force away from the cabin, and a passenger cell that maintains its shape, even when physics says the larger vehicle has the advantage. Marketing videos do not protect you. Simulation videos do not protect you. Only independently verified crash test results protect you. Now let us talk about doors. Beautiful does not mean functional. There is a difference between how wide a door opens and how much space it consumes while opening. Engineers call this the swing path. A door can look generous and still collide with the car parked next to you. There are solutions. Multi-axis hinges. Two-stage opening systems. Obstacle sensing limits. But here is what matters if you are older. You should be able to stand upright, turn, sit, and bring your legs in without twisting your spine or dropping your body weight. A door that trends on social media is worthless if it hurts your back every day. Now we confront the uncomfortable topic of repairability. Affordable cars become total losses because they are not designed to be repaired. They are designed to be assembled quickly. Repairability requires modular panels, standardized parts, structures that can be realigned without exotic equipment, procedures that work at independent shops. If Tesla wants a true mass market vehicle, they must prove that a low speed impact does not generate a five figure repair bill. This is not theoretical. It is happening today across the electric vehicle market. Imagine you are on a fixed income. You are rear ended at a stoplight. The damage looks minor, but a structural component is compromised. Replacement is required. The insurance company runs the numbers and declares a total loss. You receive a check that does not replace the car. That is the nightmare scenario Tesla must avoid. Now safety. A small car does not survive by being stiff. It survives by deforming correctly. Crumple zones must absorb energy gradually. Load paths must bypass the cabin. The safety cage must remain intact. Tesla cannot simply shrink Model 3 safety into a smaller body. But they can transfer knowledge. They have run thousands of virtual crash simulations. That experience matters. Still, until we see ratings from independent testing agencies, everything else is speculation. Now batteries. This is where affordability is decided. Tesla has confirmed a major battery investment near Berlin aimed at reaching roughly 8 gigawatt hours of annual output by the end of the decade. This is part of a much larger push toward vertical integration. Right now Berlin assembles vehicles but imports cells. That means shipping costs, geopolitical risk and supply instability. Local production tightens control. But Tesla has also admitted that producing batteries cheaply in Europe is extremely difficult due to global competition. Batteries represent roughly a third of a vehicle's cost. Vertical integration helps, but it does not change physics. Expect gradual improvements, not miracles. This is why Tesla must win on efficiency, software and total cost of ownership rather than raw range. Charging matters too, and not the kind people argue about online. Home charging is what makes electric vehicles practical. Plug in at night. Wake up charged. For older drivers, simplicity matters more than peak charging speed. Now range. Small battery packs are unforgiving. Cold weather. Highway speed. Elevation. Passengers. All of these compound. 
Tesla can win here with thermal management, efficient motors, aerodynamics, and intelligent energy control. That difference determines whether you drive confidently or anxiously. Now autonomy. The Austin testing matters not because it looks impressive, but because it generates data. Real streets. Real traffic. Real edge cases. Every mile refines braking, traction, perception, and energy management. The system that eventually reaches an affordable Tesla will not be a first-generation experiment. But physics still matters. Sunlight creates glare. Cameras struggle. Tesla is addressing this with micro-structured anti-glare technology and dynamic optical solutions. This is real engineering, not marketing. Autonomy fails when sensors cannot see. Not when software is weak. Now the cyber cab tests vehicles with mirrors and wheels. This is regulation, not retreat. Current law requires manual controls. Tesla builds to comply today while preparing to remove those components tomorrow. That learning flows directly into the next generation platform. So where does this leave us? The Berlin battery expansion is necessary, but not sufficient. The cyber cab is accelerating autonomy development. And Tesla is solving real physical problems, not just training neural networks. But two things must be proven before you spend your money. Crash safety verified independently and repair economics that do not punish careful drivers. Now I want to hear from you. Would you rather have a vehicle that is inexpensive to repair and insure, or the most advanced autonomy possible, even if ownership costs rise? Tell me which one matters more to you. If this analysis helped you think clearly, subscribe. Share it with anyone considering an electric vehicle, especially those concerned about safety, affordability and usability as we age. I will see you next time.